Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Game. So this is going to be part 5, we're going to be doing some basic player movement and sending that across the server and updating all remote players. So out of all the networking concepts, this one is probably by far the most straightforward. So as always, I've got my server on the left and my client on the right. To start this off, we are going to be heading into the client. Let's go into object local player. So this is following part 4, if you haven't seen that, visit the link in the description or the banner on the screen. So I'm going to add a step event. And let's drag in some code. So firstly, I'm just going to paste in some basic player movement. So that'll be our up, down, left, and right, and moving in all directions. Then after we've updated our player's coordinates, depending on what keys are being pressed, we're going to send his new X and Y coordinates, as well as his ID, to the server. So let's do that over here. So to speed things up, let's go to our controller, and we'll grab that latency code, because this is pretty much like a skeleton of what we need. Go back to our step of local player, right over here, let's paste this in. Alright, let's make it bigger. Okay, so we seek the beginning of the buffer. We are writing a 1. Well, we can't write a 1 this time. We need to write, let's see what's available. Um, 6. So we can do a 7, see what we can receive. Also a 7, so let's keep it 7. So we're going to write a 7. We're going to write the global dot player ID. That's the player ID of me, the person moving. Then let's copy this. Let's copy this. Paste it twice. We're going to be writing a float32 and a float32 of this local player's x and this local player's y coordinate. And we're sending that to object controller socket. Here we go. So beginning a buffer, writing a 7, writing our player ID, writing our x, writing our y, writing that to the socket. Okay, so now we need to go over to the server, intercept the 7, and tell all other clients that this user with this ID is moving to this position. Okay, let's jump over to the server. So that's going to fly into script handle incoming packets on the server side. Let's create a case 7. There we go, it's our skeleton. So firstly we grab the PID as we did here in case 6. Then I'm going to save our xx equals buffer read from the buffer and it's a type f32 and let's copy this and paste it for the yy. Just like that we have all variables being intercepted. Now we need to tell all other players that this player with this ID has moved. So let's grab some code we've used before. What have we got here? Tell other players about this change. Yeah, let's grab this. It's exactly the same. Paste it over here. And indentation. Okay, cool. So we cycling through the list of players, finding their stored sockets. If they're not the same as the person that sent us this request, then we are sending off a message. So firstly, let's change this 6 to a 7. We again writing the PID, and then we're not writing a string over here. We're writing two F32s. One will be the XX, and the other will be the YY. So because of this for loop, it's going to be sending this to every single other player that is in our DS list of players, right over here, that DS list of players. So that's going to be flying back to our client, remember, 7, PID, XX, YY. So let's go back to our client. That's going to end up in script handle incoming packets over here. Let's create our skeleton, case 7, break. And then here we're going to intercept those values. So again, the PID. And actually, we can go back to our server, copy these two, back to our client, paste them in over here. Cool. So we've got our U32, which is our player ID. We've got our first F32, which is the X coordinate. We've got the second F32, which is our Y coordinate. So now let's say with um, object remote player, I believe it's called. Cool. If remote player ID equals PID. So if this is the remote player, representation of this player that moved, set his x to xx, and set his y to yy. And that's pretty much it. Very simple stuff. So let's run through that one more time. So we have object local player. He moves around using some basic movement code as seen between the lines of 2 and 32. That's the basic movement. 
So his x coordinate is going to change here in this step. We're going to oh, change this. Let's change this to update coordinate. Update coordinates. And that's going to be reading to the beginning of the buffer, writing a 7, writing this player's ID, writing his X and Y, which are both float32s, writing that to the controller socket. So that's going to be flying number 7, all the way into object controller networking event, which gets down to this type data. So we're getting all the information in this buffer and the player's socket. That's going to get passed into handling coming packets. Remember that into handling coming packets, down here, all the way down to 7, grabbing our PID, grabbing our X and Y coordinates right over there. We were telling everyone except the player that sent us this message, this line, make sure of that. We're sending the 7, the PID, the X, X, the Y, Y. So it's just like a messenger. It's doing nothing here on the server side other than telling all the other players of this change. So remember, 7, PID, X, X, Y, Y. That's going to end up all the way back in the client side which is detected in our networking event right over here in the only case, which is the networking type data. Again, gets passed similar to the server. We grab the buffer, pass that into handle incoming packets. So let's go over here. All right, so it gets out that message ID, which was seven. And let's see, six, seven, there we go. Extracts our PID, our XX and our YY. Then we're gonna cycle through all the representations of other players on our side find the one that corresponds to this ID, and update his X and Y. So let's check this out. Save and run. And here we go, let's see. There we go, Sam's moving around when he moves on his client, and JP's moving around. It is sending his coordinates to the other side. So that pretty much wraps up basic player movement in GameMaker Studio's native networking. It's really simple to do. And as we progress with this tutorial, we are going to be adding certain extra features to that very message. For example, we're going to be sending our sprite indexes, our image indexes, all sorts of things that may change every step of the way. So I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you like this video as well as many of my other ones, please check out my Patreon campaign. I have rewritten all my rewards to make them a little bit more attractive. For example, certain patrons get to see videos such as this one a couple days before release while I'm busy sorting out project files and adding annotations and whatnot. You can find all project files straight in the description. If you have any suggestions at this point, send me a PM or put them in the comments. I do read those. You can follow me on various social media networks, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, those sort of things. Get updates as to what's happening, which tutorials are coming out and when. So until next time, happy coding and I'll see you then.